All right, we are recording. So I won't be recording during the test, obviously, but um, I'm doing introduction to lecture right now. Okay, so it looks like we're recording. Share the screen. Quick introduction to where we're at. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like I'm kind of going to be able to keep the schedule sort of, um, except for the exam, naturally. Okay, so I was already done with 13.2, and I was going to do some of 13. Point, uh, I'm finished with 13.1. I was going to do some of 13.2 and stop, then we take the test. And then next Tuesday, 13.2, 13.3. So I think I'm kind of following along with here. Uh, I will not change the day of the exam. Okay, so if I can keep the schedule, remember, I'm still trying to gain a day uh, way over here somewhere. So if I can kind of keep the schedule 13.4 by next Thursday, I'm ready to give you the test, but I'm not going to change it. I've got it set. So if that's the case, I'll just continue on with 14.1, 14.2 or whatever, and however far we get. And we'll still aim for the ex exam two, which is not that much material, as you know. So only four sections, like we said, 13.1, which I'm already finished. I'll do some 13.2, 13.3, and 13.4. All the chapters after that, though, are much longer. Chapter 14 has eight sections. Chapter 15 has nine, and chapter 16 has nine. So this would be the shortest uh, test that's coming up for the second exam. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So go ahead and take notes, but you know I don't blame you if you kind of look at this kind of half-heartedly and uh, look at it after the test, I suppose. <clears throat> okay. So key things. Again, we have a position vector. Position vector is given by R. So R is F of T, G of T, H of T, that's X, Y, and Z. This is on page 856. If you want to put this on the next formula sheet, you may. How do I take the derivative R prime? It's just the derivative of each. It's very easy. Okay. So how do I find R prime? The language we will say is we are taking the derivative of the function, but if you open up the function, there's three functions inside. Okay, the X component, the Y component, and the Z component. So you just differentiate each one. Okay. Uh, unit tangent vector. Unit tangent vector. Well, we know how to find tangent vector. Tangent is just a derivative. Then just divided by its magnitude. That's how you find a unit vector, right, in general. So unit tangent vector, capital T, is R prime divided by magnitude of R prime. They got zero there, but in general, it's R prime divided by magnitude of R prime to get a unit tangent vector. Okay, integration again is not that big a deal, I think, on page 859. Okay, integrate a vector function, you just integrate each function, three and one. So it's like part A, part B, part C, or again, more accurately, part X, part Y, and part Z, just integrate and you have I, J, and K components. By right, the way, notice that the thing that comes back out is a vector. Okay, when you integrate, you end up with a vector. Likewise, when you differentiate, you end up with a vector. Okay, so here we go. So the assignment is 3 to 25 odd, 33 to 41 odd. I'll do some this time, not much, and I'll save some for next time. Okay, so let's take a look at what I got here. Okay, number three, R of T is T minus two T squared plus one. And they say at T equals negative one. Let me show you what's going on. Okay, so sketch the plane curve with a given vector equation. Okay, so come up with a sketch. We can make a table. We did some of this in Calc 2. Find a derivative, that's easy. Sketch the position vector and the tangent vector r prime for the given value of t. Okay, so how do you do that? <clears throat> so this is obviously 2d. They just give me x and y at t equals negative 1. Okay, so first come up with a sketch. You can just make a little table here. So I plugged in from negative 3 to 1. Okay, so negative 3 minus 2 negative two minus two and so on. So negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, just plug them in. Plug into here for y. Negative three squared plus one is 10. Negative two squared plus one is five and so on. Plug in one, you get two. 
And then I just plot X versus Y as usual. Okay, so negative 5, 10, negative 4, 5, negative 3, 2, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 2. And it looks something like this. It looks like it's parabolic. Okay. okay so hopefully you did some of this in Calc 2, in two dimensions. All right. X is a function of T. Y is a function of T. You can make a table and then just plot X and Y. T can be thought of as time. So as the passage of time, the arrows indicate the direction that the particle is moving. So it's going like so. All right, how do I find a derivative? Just differentiate each part. So R prime, derivative of T minus two, one. Derivative of T squared plus one, two T. Now they want me to plug in negative one. So plug in negative one, that stays the same. Negative one gives me negative two. So the derivative vector, tangent vector is one, negative two. Okay, then in the directions they say draw the position vector and the tangent vector. Okay, so if I plug in negative one, they okay, want t is negative one, I got it here. Why is negative one in the middle of my table? Because they told me to plug in negative one. So instead of what I would normally put zero in the middle, but they said negative one. So I said, okay, I'll go negative two, negative three, and zero and one. So the point is negative three, two, the ordered pair. Okay, so this is the position vector. Okay, again, position vector always emanates from the origin, starts at the origin. Okay, now the tangent vector at that point is one, negative two. So from here, I go over one, down two, and that would be the tangent vector. And you can kind of see if the particle is moving along like that, that seems to be the tangent of the curve. That's the direction that we're moving at the moment in two space, in two dimensions, right? Okay, so number seven is similar. Okay, so R of T is four sine T, negative two cosine T. Again, that's two dimensional at T equals three pi over four. <clears throat> All right, so I felt like just doing from zero to pi. <clears throat> okay, so zero, pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, pi. Okay, plug in for x. Remember this is x, y. If they give me r, r is a position vector. Anytime it's a position vector, it's automatically x comma y in 2D or x, y, z in 3D, okay. So I'll plug in zero, sine of zero is zero. <clears throat> pi over four, sine of pi over four is radical two over two. Multiply that by four, two radical two, that's about 2.8. Sine of pi over two is one, multiply it by four, you get four. Three pi over four, sine of three pi over four is also radical two over two, multiply by four, two radical two, that's 2.8. And sine of pi is zero. So these are the x coordinates. Let me raise it up again. So roughly 0, 2.84, 0. And now the y coordinates. So plug in 0, cosine of 0 is 1, multiply by negative 2, negative 2. <clears throat> cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2, multiply by negative 2. Negative radical 2, that's about negative 1.4. Pi over 2. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Three pi over four, cosine of three pi over four is negative radical two over two, multiplied by negative two, positive radical two, about 1.4. Pi, cosine of pi is negative one, times negative two, two. Okay, it ends up looking like an ellipse if you draw it, but anyway, <clears throat> zero negative two is here, 2.8, negative 1.4, four zero, 2.2, 2, 1.4, 2. So right now it's going like this. So that's the graph. And the position vector is right here. At three pi over four, we are at uh, two radical two comma radical two. That's over here. So that's the position vector. Okay, sorry, I messed up over here. Okay. For the derivative, I want the R prime tangent vector. So derivative four sine t, four cosine t. 
derivative of negative two cosine t is positive two sine of t. Then I plug in three pi over four. <clears throat> cosine of three pi over four is negative radical two over two. Multiply that by four, negative two radical two. Sine of three pi over four is radical two over two, multiplied by two, radical two. So the tangent vector is negative two radical two, radical two. So very crudely, that's something like that. Okay, sorry, I messed up with like that. And again, it seems reasonable. If I was on this ellipse, like if I was on this ride, a roller coaster ride, right smack dab at that point, what direction am I heading? I'm heading this way. And then of course, as the roller coaster turns, the, the ride continues, then the tangent vector keeps changing, of course. Okay. All right, then let's see. Um, I'll show you uh, number nine. Find the derivative of the vector function. Three components, very easy. We're just taking three derivatives. X component, Y component, Z component. So that's R. Find R prime. Okay, so that's T minus two to the half. That's T to the negative two, right? So we are saying the derivative, but we're taking three derivatives, three and one. <clears throat> so the derivative of this is one half t minus two to the negative half times one by the chain rule. So I don't have to worry about that. The derivative of three is zero. The derivative of t to the negative two is negative two t to the negative three. Clean up the algebra. One over two radical t minus two, zero negative two over t cubed. So we are gonna say this is the derivative of r. This is r prime. This is a tangent vector, even though we did three. So we will say this is one derivative, but we open it up and there's actually three derivatives. Okay, that's all. Okay, then 13 is just a little bit longer. A lot of this is just a review, frankly, of Calc 1. So 13, find the derivative. T sine ti, e to the t cosine tj, sine t cosine tk. And you know me, I'm going to write it without the i, j, and k because it's shorter. <clears throat> so it really looks like product root, product root, product root, right? So r prime, uh, first times the derivative of the second, t cosine t, plus second function sine t times the derivative of the first, derivative of t is one. Product root, right? The derivative of fg is fg prime plus g f prime, right? Product root. Same thing, product root. First function e to the t times the derivative of the second, the derivative of cosine t is negative sine t. So this is first times the derivative of the second <clears throat> plus the second cosine of t times the derivative of the first, the derivative of e to the t is itself. So that's the middle one, the y component. And then this one's a product rule. So first sine of t times the derivative of the second, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. That gives me negative sine squared of t plus the second cosine of t times the derivative of the first, derivative of sine t is also cosine t, so cosine squared of t. So that's that. Okay, then uh, 17 and 19. 17, find a unit tangent vector at the point with the given value of the parameter of t. So we've already found a tangent vector to get a unit tangent vector, just divide by its magnitude. Okay, so 17. So R of t is t squared minus two t, one plus three t, one third t squared plus one half t squared, and you're at t equals two. <clears throat> okay, find R prime, just like the previous one. Take the derivative of that, derivative of that, derivative of that. So that's gonna be two t minus two, right? Derivative of one plus three t is three. Derivative of that is uh, t squared plus t, right? Three times one third is one, two times a half is one. So you have this. Okay, that's the tangent vector anywhere. Now we're at t equals two, I plug in two. That's just like calc one, right? Calc one, you had a formula for the derivative. Now they say, what's the derivative at x equals blah, 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 then you just plug in. <clears throat> so now I just plug in two. So two times two minus two is two. Three is 
3, 2 squared plus 2 is 6. That's r prime of 2. Now I just change it to a unit tangent vector, which means just take the vector and divide it by its magnitude. So 2, 3, 6 divided by square root of 2 squared is 4 plus 3 squared is 9 plus 6 squared is 36. That comes out to be 49 very conveniently. Square root of 49 is 7. So I just divide by 7. So the unit tangent vector, capital T, is 2 sevenths, 3 sevenths, 6 sevenths. Okay. All right, and 19 is similar. I'll stop with 21. So I'll be done in a couple minutes and then I'll let you ask questions pertaining to the test. I'll stop at 21, so I'll continue next time. So I'll let you ask questions. Uh, if there aren't any questions, we'll go straight to break and go straight to the test. <clears throat> okay, 21. R is T, T squared T cubed, find R prime, capital T of one, R double prime, and R prime cross R double prime for whatever reason. That would become important a little bit later. Let's do it. Okay, so R is T, T squared, T cubed. So they ask for R prime, that's easy. Derivative, derivative, derivative. Derivative of T is one. Derivative of T squared is two T. Derivative of T cubed is three T squared. Okay, now we want the derivative at one, plug in one. <coughs> One, there's nothing to plug in, so it stays one. <clears throat> plug in one here, that's two. Plug in one here, it's three. So one, two, three. Okay. They want a unit tangent vector. So do the same thing as before. Take the vector one, two, three, divided by its magnitude, and you get a unit vector. So square root of one squared plus two squared plus three squared, one plus four plus nine is radical 14. So a unit tangent vector is one, two, three, over radical 14. And by the way, this is acceptable. <clears throat> you don't have to say, you know, one over radical 14, two over radical 14, three over radical 14. You can just divide the whole thing by radical 14. <clears throat> so that means even here, you could have just gone two, three, six divided by seven. But I thought six, uh, seven is a nice enough number that, okay, we'll just put seven on all of them. Here, radical 14, not so nice. So I'll just divide it like that. <clears throat> okay, our double prime, is just the derivative of r prime, just as you might think, second derivative. So I differentiate r prime. Derivative of one is zero, derivative of two t is two, derivative of three t squared is six t. And then they want r prime cross r double prime for whatever reason. Uh, it's gonna be an important formula later. <clears throat> so I, J, K, good practice for the test anyway, that I'll give you maybe a cross product. <clears throat> okay, so r prime was one, two t, three t squared, our double prime was zero to six t. So i minus j plus k, right? So i cover up, cover up, two t, three t squared, two six t. So that times that is 12 t squared. That times that minus six t squared. Minus j, cover up, cover up. One times six t is six t, minus zero times anything is zero. And then k, cover up, cover up, one, two, t, zero, two. So one times two is two, minus zero times anything is zero, so two. And just rewrite it as uh, that minus that is six t squared, negative six t and two. Okay, and that's problem 21, and that's all I was gonna do for today, okay? So I'll stop. I've done about half of the problems I was going to do in 13.2. So next Tuesday, uh, game plan is to finish 13.2 and start 13.3, which is exactly like the schedule, okay, except that I messed up over here. Okay, I'll still keep the exam day as here. Okay, so I will open it up to questions and answers now. You can either unmute yourself or put it in the chat. Okay, and if you don't have anything, we'll have a very early break and you can have more time to do the test. <clears throat> okay, so. Anybody want to either unmute yourselves or put in the chat any questions pertaining to the test? Okay, I did get some of your uh, homeworks already, so that's it. Okay, so again, uh, whenever we start, you have until the end of class, so 8.25. Uh, you have five minutes to take a picture, so, you know, click, 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 click. Uh, so submit the test by 8.30, and you have until 9 o'clock to turn in the homework, okay? 
Okay, let's see. I've got a request for some. Uh, 4.2 and the 27. Okay. So questions are coming in now. No. 12.227, 12.5, number three. Four point five thirty one. Okay, that's as much as I see now. Okay, I see three questions. Twelve point two twenty seven, twelve point five three, twelve point five thirty one. Okay, I will turn off the chat. You may still keep writing. So let me try to do these problems. Okay, and yeah, I only want to do problems that were assigned, if you don't mind. Okay, so twelve point two twenty seven. Four point two twenty seven. Okay. One plus I, sorry, I plus radical three J. What is the angle between the given vector and the positive direction of the X axis? Okay. So the vector looks like this. So this is one radical three. It's asking for theta. Okay, the hypotenuse is two. Okay, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, and let's see, cosine of theta is one half in the picture. And I know the cosine of 60 degrees is a half, so theta is 60 degrees, All right? So that's basically it. So find the hypotenuse, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. One squared is one, radical d squared is three, add them up, that's four, square root is two. So that's that. Okay, 12.5, number three. Twelve point five number three. The line through the point blah 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 parallel to a certain vector. Okay. So, so the point in question is two two point four three point five. And it's just parallel to Parallel, my abbreviation for parallel is draw parallel line by that. 3i plus 2j minus k. Okay, so it's parallel to this. I can use the same direction vector. So v is 3, 2, negative 1. Okay, so R is R zero plus T V by formula. So R zero, just take the point and write it as a vector. So R is two, two point four, three point five plus T times three, two, negative one. And we just clean it up. So two plus three T, just add the X components. 2.4 plus two T and 3.5 minus T. And yes, this is X, Y, Z. So parametric equations, just write them as X, Y, and Z. So X equals two plus three T y equals 2.4 plus 2t, z is 3.5 minus t. So those are parametric equations. And it didn't ask for symmetric equations, but just for practice anyway. So this is parametric equations. 
And then for symmetric equations, just solve for t. So that's easy algebra, x minus two divided by three. This one is y minus 2.4 divided by two. And this is z minus 3.5 divided by negative one. Professor, if instead of they asked for perpendicular, a line perpendicular to it, how would you do that? Um, they would not ask you that. You In space, there is no one line perpendicular to this, okay? So think of it this way. Okay, so you have a perpendicular. If I just tilt it in space, it's still perpendicular, but you have a whole bunch of them. So they wouldn't ask you uh, that question. Okay. That's different than in two dimensions. In two dimensions, Okay, if I draw a line like that, there's only going to be one perpendicular. Okay, but if imagine, take that same picture and move it all over space, then you have many. So that would not be a possible question. So you don't have to worry. Okay. About Thanks. All right, so let's see 12.531. The plane to the points, of blah, blah, blah. Okay. So same section 31, come up with a plane going to 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 0. Whoops. Okay, so there's three points in space, one here, one here, one here. They form a triangle, come up with a plane of that triangle. So I will come up with a normal vector. So how about I'll call this P, Q, and R. Once I have the normal vector, I have the coefficients that I want. <clears throat> so let's form the vector P, Q, which is one, negative one, zero. Okay, delta X, delta Y, delta Z. P, R, from P to R is one, zero, negative one. I did that right? Delta X, delta Y, delta Z. So just subtract one minus nothing, zero minus one, one minus one. And then from P to R, one minus nothing, one minus one, zero minus one. Okay, so <clears throat> PQ cross PR, I, J, K, one, negative one, zero, one, zero, one which is I times something minus J times something plus K times something. I times negative one minus nothing. J would be one minus nothing. And K is nothing, let's see, nothing minus a minus one, which is one. So let's see, negative one, negative one, one. That's a normal vector. Okay, so use that normal vector, use this point. So the coefficients are negative one, x minus zero. I can pick any point, how about I'll just pick that one. Minus one times y minus one, plus one, z minus one equals zero. Okay, clean that up negative x minus y plus z. And what do I have? Negative one times zero, zero, plus one and minus one equals zero. So negative x minus y plus z equals zero. Or make it nicer, multiply both sides by negative one, x plus y minus z equals zero. Okay, and a quick double check, zero, one, one. Yep, that works. One, zero, one, yep, that works. And one, one, zero, okay. So I must say group somewhere. That's basically, yeah. Okay, so that's 31, I think. And I've caught up since that round. Okay, so let me check the chat for what else we have. 12.531, uh, I did that. 12.311. Okay, uh, write your exams on a separate sheet of paper. Yes, 
just like the quizzes. Uh, keep the homework separate from the test. Uh, so have maybe send me an email for the homework and separately send me an email for the test and maybe put it in the announcements. I mean, you know, the subject title. So I can say, hey, this is the test and this is the homework so I can distinguish between them. Okay, 12.311. Uh, send the homework. Yeah, uh, break it down into smaller chunks for sending the homework. But yeah, I, I know there's problems with file sizes, so um, I don't know. Maybe one email for 12.1 to 12.3, another email for 12.4 to 12.6, or maybe to be safe, just some of you sent one email each, one for 12.1, another one for 12.2, another, you know, that's fine. I'll accept that also. Okay. 4.311. Uh, yeah. Okay. And yes, homework is due by nine. Okay, I'm turning off the chat again quickly. Let me quickly draw the picture. UVW. Arrow this way, arrow this way, arrow this way. You use a unit vector. So magnitude of U is the same as magnitude of V, which is the same as magnitude of W. You have an equilateral triangle. Find U dot V. Okay, U and V are both emanating from the same point, so that's fine. So by formula, it's norm of U, norm of V, cosine of 60 degrees, which is one times one times a half or one half. Okay. The trickier one is u dot w. Okay, they both have to emanate from the same point. So I'm forced to put a duplicate of u down here, which now makes this angle 120 degrees. So u dot w by formula is norm of u, norm of w, cosine of 120 degrees, which is negative a half. So one times one times negative a half, which is negative a half. Okay. That. Okay. Okay. I think I've caught up with the last chat, but let me check what else there is. Uh, let's see. So six emails is fine. I've, I've got that from somebody already, but if you want to do something else, that's fine too. <clears throat> okay, Google Drive, I've had problems. Okay, uh, the, my computer is not the best and I've had trouble with Google Drive before. It might work, it might not work. So I can't promise that that's gonna work. Okay, scan problems are fine. Genius scan is fine. Other scanning problems is perfectly fine. Okay, and I think the rest of the chat is there. Uh, somebody asked something about 12.6, but I don't know what the question really is. So if that person wants to do that, that's fine. Okay, so I think I've caught up, unless the person who asked something about 12.6, if you can either unmute yourself or give me more details about what it is. Okay. Okay, cam scanner is great. Adobe scan, any scanning problem is fine. I actually prefer that you scan it because it looks better than if you take a picture of your cell phone, but you know, whatever. Okay. Anybody else, please? 12.6, number five. Sorry, folks, just when you think we're done, somebody asked a question, <laughs> but you know, that's fine. I said I was gonna keep going, so it's fine. I hope there isn't somebody out there that facetiously is saying, Oh, you know, he's about to stop. I'm just going to slow everything down. But, you know, that's the way it goes. 12.6, number five. Yeah, that's why to save time, it'd be good if you just put it all at once rather than delay. So if you have a question, you know you're going to put, put it now rather than waiting. And then I drag it out and then you ask the question. So it wastes everybody's time and less time to do the test, right? 
and 12.6. Okay. I know maybe the way I'll do it now is okay. Uh, if you have any question at all, send it in the chat in the next, you know, three minutes. If you ever want me to do it, otherwise, you know, I'll stop rather than stop. Who has a question? Oh, then something comes in a minute later, and then uh, we go, oh, another minute. So okay, so let's make it. Any questions you want tonight, send it in the next three minutes. Otherwise, uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, let's see, 12.6, number five. 12.6, number five was not assigned, so I'm not gonna do it. Okay, if the problems are not in numerical order, that's fine. I gave it out of order, so you can just you don't have to re-put it in order, just do any order that you want. Okay, let's see. So which homework are you turning in? All of chapter 12? Okay, and let's see, 12.325. Use vector to decide whether the vertices is right angled. P is one, negative three, two. Q is two, zero, four. Negative four. Hardest part for me is just getting in the paper. Six, negative two, negative five. Okay, quick double check. One, negative three, two, two, zero, negative four, six, negative two, negative five. Okay. P, Q, are so I need to find if any dot products come out to be zero. That's basically it. Okay, so PQ is one, three, negative six. PR is five, negative one. Negative seven. Okay, I might just have to say etc. But you get the idea. Let me double check. From one to two, you add one. Correct. From negative three to zero, you add three. From two to negative four, you subtract six. That's right. PQ, PR. They have to emanate from the same point. So from P to R, five. That's right. Negative one. Correct. Negative seven. Okay. So PQ dot PR is one times five is five. Three times negative one is negative three. Negative six times negative seven is 42. That's not equal to zero, okay? So this is not a right angle. Okay, and that's the idea. Do the same thing for the other ones. So now to see if this is correct, you need QP equals blah, blah, blah. QR equals blah, blah, blah. Take that dot product and see if you get zero. If none of the dot product gives you zero, it's not a right triangle. If you get one of them to be zero, then it is, okay? So that's the idea behind it. And to save time, that's as much as we're gonna do for that, okay? And let's see, I think that's past the three minutes. I don't see anything else in the chat. So that means I will declare that we're gonna be finished, okay? All right, so, we're done. So we're gonna break. What time is it? 6.50. So let's officially break until seven, have the normal break. <clears throat> Sometime in the next 10 minutes, I will send you the test via Canvas announcement, but I also project it over here if you want to help you. Okay, so we'll start back up at seven o'clock and then you'll have to have your camera on, mute yourself the rest of the time. Okay, 
we'll start up at seven o'clock early break.